Welcome back to the Breakfast Sun Plus TV Africa. General Abdurrahman Dambazal, former Chief of Army Staff and Minister of Interior, has alleged that terrorists and members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOP activities will constitute a serious threat to the general elections in 2023. Dambazal spoke on Tuesday in Abuja at the Blueprint newspaper annual lecture that was titled 2023 Politics, a National Secretary. Uh, national security and national Nigeria's stability. He believed that insecurity would affect the 2023 general elections, saying that some communities would still be displaced and terrorists would likely continue to attack on soft targets to hinder Nigerians from casting their votes. According to him, INEC officials and ad hoc staff would be highly apprehensive despite the assurance by the government to protect them. Access to polling units in border communities may pose some difficulties. This is one more reason why uh, adequate security must be provided. We have a guest joining us this morning, a public affairs analyst, comrade Mark Adebayo. Uh, he's the executive director of Secure World and Liberty Initiative for Peace. Mark Adebayo, good it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Plus TV Africa. All right. What do you make of these thoughts uh, from, you know, uh, Abdurrahman Dambazal about, you know, the security situation, IPOP, terrorists, and a threat to the 2023 elections? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much. You see, um, the issue of uh, security and insecurity in Nigeria should be of concern to every Nigerian especially as we are moving towards the 2023 general elections. One would uh, assume, one would, uh, one would uh, assume or accept the fact that being a retired general, a former interior minister, the other person will, uh, will know what he was talking about and that uh, it should uh, not be discountenanced. But there's a necessity, it is necessary to disaggregate the issues involved here. For instance, Yes, terrorists, uh, you know, uh, Boko Haram, Iswap, or elements, uh, and the rest of that, including uh, uh, kidnappers. And you know that it, it, there's a thin line between terrorists, kidnappers, and uh, bandits in Nigeria today. They are, as far as I'm concerned, all of them are terrorists. But on the issue of uh, IPOP, I think we need to disaggregate the issues here. Um, IPOP came up as a liberation struggle organization for the liberation of the people of the Southeast, the Igbo people of the Southeast, you know, specifically. And uh, I believe that they came up with a honorable struggle to liberate their, 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 their people from the oppressive nature of the Nigerian states, which uh, they believe uh, was so oppressive to them. Now, but what is happening that you, you describe that at the beginning, a deception. IPOP was not carrying arms. There was no ESN then. There was no Eastern Security Network then. They were only protesting, mass protests with flags and rest of that until the government unleashed terror on them, began, began to shoot them, began to arrest them. So they discovered that they needed to protect themselves and they went and, you know, armed themselves. Now, you now discover that significantly the government, through its security agencies, has been able to uh, reduce the capacity of IPOP to unleash armed violence on the, on the people or especially on government targets. And then you will discover that recently, I think around April this year, the governor of Anambra State, uh, Governor Charles Toludo, went to see in American in detention. And we heard what in American said that uh, there that, that should not be any violence uh, through IPOP to anybody. And then IPOP has denied majority of the assaults uh, against government targets and individuals in the state. What has happened, that I believe has happened, is that the so-called unknown government, some criminal elements in the Southeast, just saw the window of the IPOP agitation as a business, as a criminal business venture for them. So they took advantage of that and started kidnapping their own people, raping their own people, beheading their own people, and getting ransom from their own people. You know, uh, just uh, Umoha, Two days ago in Umoha, a young guy of about 25, 26 was gone down in broad daylight by this so-called unknown government. Umoha, in, I'm talking of, it's not so far from Oweri, in Imo State. Governor Shah Soludo has been able to significantly de-escalate 
the terrorism and the criminality of the unknown government in Anambra State since he came on board. Especially after that meeting with uh, Namdikano in the in DSS detention. And when he came back, he set up in motion, you know, steps and actions, and he became so proactive in, uh, in preventing this type of uh, carnage in the Southeast. The unfortunate thing is that if care is not taken, even candidates from, uh, from the Southeast may not be able to campaign in the Southeast. The Labour Party candidate is from the Southeast. The ADC candidate, yes, the ADC candidate is from the Southeast. Uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of others. You know, the African Democratic Congress candidate is from, is from, the, from the Southeast. I'm wondering, even if these people will be able to campaign in their own state, but it will not be because of IPOP. It is because of these uh, ubiquitous unknown government. And if the governors of the Southeast can come together and arrange a network of security to be able to get rid of these people, uh, it, it, is, it is doable. Now, you will remember, you will recall that prior to the 2015 general elections, uh, there were apprehensions like this that, oh, Boko Haram will score through the election, there will be crisis, there will, there will not be a peaceful environment. But President, ex President Goodluck Jonathan, former President Goodluck Jonathan, was able to scale up the activities of the security operations in the, in the north, northeast and northwest, which significantly, you know, decapitated the capacity of Boko Haram and other terrorists to affect negatively the 2015 general elections. This government must learn from that and do something about it. That there was an upscale in the security operations of the security agency, the Anjia Army in particular, that made sure that the capacity of Boko Haram to unleash terror during elections was totally uh, no, uh, no, uh, reduced and devastated. Unfortunately, I doubt, I hope, let me say, I hope that this government will aggregate the same willpower to be able to de-escalate the capacity of Boko Haram and other terrorists to affect our elections negatively. That is something that uh, uh, we, we all have to see because this government has something to learn from. In 2015, when, this uh, when the, the current administration came on board, that election would have been messed up. Especially if President Gulo Jonathan didn't want that election to hold. He had more than enough excuses because the, the security situation was, uh, was not as bad as this, so not as bad as this, but it was significantly bad. So what did Jonathan do then to ensure that we had an election that was peaceful? That To the extent that even in those areas that were supposed to, to have security challenges, more folks came from there. In 2015 and 2019, more force came from there. So this government must learn from that. From that, what 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 did the government do in 2015? What did the government do in 2019 that ensured that uh, uh, elections were held? You remember that one of the arguments of uh, former Vice President uh, Atiku was that the votes from Bruno Yobe Axis there in the northeast, where there was a uh, high scale uh, operations of Boko Haram and other terrorist organizations in 2019. How come that was from there? We are more than the, we, are, we, are, we had peace. So the government, if the government sits up to its responsibility, if it's alive to its responsibility, it, uh, we will hold a peaceful, free, fair election. But we don't want excuses. We don't want this government to come out with their, their perennial excuses 2015 that uh, has led to you know, unprecedented failure in the administration. We should... The security agencies, the government should be able to sufficiently arm the security agencies, encourage them, pay their allowances, arm them with sophisticated weapons that they need, encourage them, let them go and de-escalate de these people. And, uh, you know, I believe very strongly, despite the challenges and the other insinuations, that the Nigerian army and other security agencies have the capacity, have the capacity to defeat terrorism in this country. I believe so. With the right leadership at the top, and with the right political leadership at the presidency, the Nigerian army is capable of, the, of totally destroying these people. I have strong belief in that. Okay. So, Mama, let's also look at another issue that's been put, out, uh, put on the table. Uh, the issue is that prior to the election, just uh, recently we had the uh, elections in Anambra State. And prior to this time, there were a lot of concerns as regards whether or not that election would hold because of the activities of 
um, sit at home, don't sit at home, unknown gunmen. And there seemed to be a lot of confusion because from what uh, the feelers that were getting, it seemed like some other elements have hijacked, you know, uh, IPOP for what we know them for. And they are using this, you know, to commit crimes and perpetuate evil in that particular region. But that election happened because there were a lot of fears that there was just really not going to be an election. And now we have Charles Saludo, who's, who's the governor of, you know, Anambra State. So uh, do we think that these are not just propaganda uh, to cripple the spirit of Nigerians ahead of the 2023 elections, especially when it seemed to be uh, that there's been a lot of association with some presidential candidate with the IPOP. Right, we've had uh, uh, a certain presidential candidate being described as a tribal bigot and what have you. He's been also associated to IPOP because now IPOP has been described as uh, a terrorist. I mean, a group of terrorists who terrorize, but we understand the activities here. So don't you think that all of this is such sub of propaganda that's geared at crippling the spirit of Nigerians ahead of the 2023 elections uh, just to instill fear. Because the level of awareness now, the people are politically aware and they're more uh, focused and determined to ensure that uh, something different happens for our country. Yeah, you see, look, you have, you have, you have raised a germane point there. You see, there are suspicions about General Damba's statement that uh, probably uh, he, he was doing an actual job of preparing the ground to look to find an excuse for postponing the elections by saying there will be insecurity and the rest of that. And like I said, he's likely to be believed because he's a retired general and a former interior minister in this country. So it's quite unfortunate. I do not believe that a leader at that level should now begin to you know, instill fears into the people. Because what he has declared will be instilling fears into the electorate and it can lead to a, a, a significant voter apathy in the next election. And that should not be coming from uh, someone at, his, at that level. I think we need courage in this country. I think we need the encouragement of that. And I think we need somebody to motivate us, not somebody that will put fears in us. But Nigerians are determined to go into this election. They are determined to vote. We, are, we have our presidented registration of voters, at, as, according to INEC records. So um, rather than... Uh, we, we could encourage the government to say, look, prepare for, prepare for this election. Make sure that you put security arrangements in place that would guarantee the safety and security of the electorate. Yeah, we could be saying that, we, but we shouldn't be saying that uh, insecurity might mar the 2023 general election. A leader should not be saying that. We need we, we need the economy in this country. We need motivation in this in this country. Not that kind of uh, uh, that kind of uh, you know statements that would uh, further discourage Nigerians, that would further put fear into Nigerians, that would further compromise our elections. I don't think we need that. Coming back to the issue of Anambra, there was a lot of apprehension prior to the Anambra election. People thought, oh, oh, that was not going to. I was part. I was one of the people uh, that believed that uh, the Anambra election might be marked totally scotched by insecurity, by the activities of this unknown government and the rest of that. You see, when a leadership is determined, has the, has aggregated the political will to do the right thing, they get it done. It gets done. It, that was what happened in the Anambra election. The leadership came together with community leaders and with some uh, the youth organizations and that. And they, the people decided that they were going to have a peace. You know, the current governor uh, escaped assassination attempt twice. You know, he said DC and some other security agents who are protecting lost their lives on the uh, uh, you know in the attempt to, to 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 take his life. That's what the man got into into. Uh, into government and the, the Alhambra state now, today, is perhaps the safest state in the whole of Southeast because a man came on board, decided to be proactive and to do what is necessary, what is needful to be able to secure and save and protect his people. That's the kind of approach that we need at the national level that is not there right, right now. If the government and the security agencies do the needful, if they perform their assignment, their duties very well, we have a, 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 a peaceful election in 2023. I have no doubt about that. The security agencies, the army, uh, the army, the security, the other security agencies, the police, the DSS, uh, the Air Force, they have the capacity to be able to give us to deliver a peaceful election in this country. I will need peaceful election for 2023 because um, uh, there must be an expression to the will of Nigerians or who they want to be their leader in 2023. Considering the fact that 
this country has been iniquit iniquitously reduced to the level of a backwarding of a, of, a, of, a, of a failing state. We need somebody to come on a rescue mission. We need somebody to come and make this country, to stabilize this country. We need someone who can reunite Nigeria. We don't, we don't want anybody that will come and continue the ethno-religious antipathies that have bedeviled this country in the last seven and a half years. We don't want anybody that will come and take us from top to bottom. We, we want somebody that will take us from the bottom that we are in, from the abyss to the very top. You see, the countries in the world that, even in Africa here, that have the same league, on the same league with Nigeria, are, have gone far ahead. Have gone far ahead. Look at Turkey. Look at Singapore. Look at Ghana. Look at... Uh, Mark, uh, just before we go now, I'd like you to answer this quickly because, uh, I mean, I'm impromptu uh, to call it off this morning or call it a wrap uh, because we are really out of time. But apart from the fact that, you know, the former general has cited uh, terrorists as a threat uh, to the elections for 2023, do you see other uh, factors that might just be threat to the elections in 2023? Well, 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 well uh, aside from this, because the biggest threat, I believe, should be, uh, would be food buying and food selling. Uh, because, you know, poverty in Nigeria has been deliberate, deliberately weaponized by the, by the leadership of this country so that the people, when you throw any little thing at them, they just jump at it. So that uh, the, 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 my, my biggest fear, aside from insecurity, is the area of uh, the ISB that gets in the food, you know. You know, people will begin to you know, see how look at how the candidates of of the various political parties emerged. It was a contest and contestation of who who, who had the, the 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 biggest dollars. So uh, the issue of a prebenda politics, prebenda democracy, and food is what I am afraid of. That uh, uh, whether the, the real will and wishes of the Nigerian people will be will reflect in the elections. Uh, of 2023, that people will not... So, this, at the level of society, we have a lot of job to do, to conscientize the people, to sensitize the people against food, against selling their common matrimony, against selling their consciences, you know, against you know, compromising good life, good roads, infrastructure, security, and uh, sound education for 10,000, 5,000 know, for the next four years, and that we enslave them for the rest, and, and generations unborn for the rest of their lives. We, we need, Nigerians too, must realize and understand the fact that you cannot be collecting money from politicians, and when they get to power, you are expecting them to perform, they will not perform. And to my people in the Southeast, they must know that the violence they are, the sit at home things, you know, are not, are not doing anything good for them. It is counterproductive, it is destroying their economy, it is destroying their infrastructure. Okay. It is... It is taking them backward. They are industrious people. They should not allow criminals and criminalities to destroy the, the legacy that they have built in Southeast. And so they have a job to do. Well, thank the government you, has Mark. a job to do, oh, but the citizens must to come go. together and ensure that security in the Southeast. It is the job for the Igbos to step to do. Mark, we need to go not now. Not just government alone. Thank you so much. I mean, fantastic, uh, uh, your insights this morning on the show. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for making our time. Thank to you so be much for having me. The breakfast. Yes. We've been speaking with Mark Adebayo, public affairs analyst. Uh, he's also executive director of Secure World and Liberty Initiative for Peace and uh, the threat to the 2023 elections has been put out by uh, a former military general, Dambatoire. That's what we've been looking at and other threats. But that's it. Thank you so much for being uh, with us this morning from 7 o'clock up until now. We will return tomorrow for the breakfast. If, in case you missed out on any part of it, it will be great to follow us on Facebook. Twitter and Instagram and do subscribe to YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. Have a great morning.